First, I would like to thank the members of the Veterans Committee who felt that my career warranted this splendid honor. Second, I would like to thank professional baseball for all it has done for our family. We've had seven members of our family have worked in professional baseball. Two of them are still active, my son Andy, my grandson Lee McPhail IV. You've also heard about my father and I being the first father-son to be in the Hall of Fame. My father was brilliant, he was colorful, he was creative, he was dynamic, he was innovative. I could go on for some time. I was none of those things. <laughs> we have a lot of our family here today. I would like to introduce them all, but I'm afraid that would take too long. So what I will do, I will ask them all to stand up if they would. I was pleasantly surprised when I was elected to the Hall of Fame. And one reason was that I was in the category of an executive. And there aren't too many executives who have been elected to the Hall of Fame. In fact, in the last 15 years, I was only the second. Uh, That's understandable, really, because the Hall of Fame is for players, and that's what it should be. But I would like to say that the honor that's given me, there are an awful lot of my peers who were, had pretty much comparable careers and who are really entitled to the same kind of honor that I'm receiving here today. So I would accept this honor that you've given me, not just for myself, but for those peers who had long and meritorious service in an executive capacity. There are people like John McHale, Joe Brown, Bobby Brown, Chubb Feeney, Frank Cashin, Jim Campbell, and many more. I had a lot of jobs in baseball, as you've heard, and I can honestly say that I enjoyed them all. I think perhaps the one, the period that I enjoyed the most was when I served as farm director for the Yankees. I enjoyed visiting our minor league clubs, both at home and on the road. I counted one time and I found that I'd seen professional baseball games in 61 different cities in the United States. I liked working with the managers and the scouts. People like Harry Kraft, Burley Grimes, Hank Bauer, Ralph Houck, Daryl Johnson, Eddie Robinson, I could name quite a few more. In my 10 years as farm director and as visiting with all these clubs, one of the things that I enjoyed most was seeing young players come into professional baseball and sign a, a contract with a major league organization and then move up through that organization and become nucleus of the team that they represented. And we had some great ones in the Yankee organization. I know I was in a tryout camp we had in Branson, Missouri, when one of our scouts, Tom Greenway, brought in a young 16-year-old shortstop. It turned out his name was Mickey Mantle. <laughs> uh, we had some great years, in those Yankee years, as someone pointed out. Uh, the 10 years I was in that job, the Yankees won seven World Series. And I think one of my most exciting moments was the 1958 World Series, when the Yankees were playing Milwaukee, and Milwaukee led three games to one. The Yankees won in Yankee Stadium to send the game back to Milwaukee, and then went back to Milwaukee and won the sixth and seventh games to be the world's champion. 
If I had any major disappointments other than player strikes, <laughs> the one real disappointment I had in my career was that the seven years I was general manager with Baltimore, the seven years I was general manager with the Yankees, we never won a championship. When I went to Baltimore, they had, not too long ago, they'd been the St. Louis Browns, and they'd just moved to, they had moved to Baltimore. They hadn't yet finished in the first division. And we made good progress there. The team moved up. Uh, the last five years I was there, we finished in the first division. We finished as high as second, but we never won a pennant. Uh, the last thing that I did do for the Orioles was I made a deal for Frank Robinson. And in 1966, with Frank Robinson in the lineup, the Orioles did win the championship, but I was in the commissioner's office by then. I went back to the Yankees the next year, and if you can believe it, the year before that, the Yankees had finished in 10th place. So where we had a building job in Baltimore to do, we had a rebuilding job in New York to do. And again, we made good progress. They finished in the first division for the last five years I was there. And um, we finished as high as second, but again, we didn't win a pennant. I'd like to conclude my remarks today, if I may, by telling you a little story. It has to do with two members of the Hall of Fame who are here today, seated in the audience, Brooks Robinson and Earl Weaver. The Brooks had had such a wonderful career for the Orioles that they wanted to honor him in some way. So they scheduled a night for him at Memorial Stadium ceremonies to be before the game. And inasmuch as I'd been general manager during Brooks's early years with the Orioles, they invited me to be part of the ceremonies. I was also president of the league. Now, a few days before Brooks Robinson night, the clubs are playing in Toronto. And along about the sixth or seventh inning, the Orioles had a lead and manager Earl Weaver was feeling very good because he felt if they could hold on to that lead, it would be a win in a very close pennant race. Not only that, but it would enable them to get the last flight out of Toronto back to Baltimore. But unfortunately for Earl, a big heavy shower came and the game had, was halted temporarily. And Earl was feeling very good. He thought it was going to be called off, but unfortunately the rain stopped. The Toronto Grand Crew got the field back in shape. The umpires called play ball. But Earl wasn't going to give up yet. He went out and he said, this field is not safe to play on. There's some wet spots in foul territory. A player might get hurt. I'm not going to have my team out there. The umpires finally said, the field is okay. We've give you, we'll give you three minutes to get your team out here. If you don't, we'll forfeit the game to Toronto. Well, Earl didn't bring his team out. And they forfeited the game to Toronto. So now, the, the Baltimore fans are livid about this. They're very upset, and the Baltimore management officially protested, and that protest came to me as a league president, and I upheld the umpires. Now it's... Brooks Robinson night, and it's my turn to do my little part in the ceremonies. And I walked up to the mic and started to say a few words, and 50,000 people booed. <laughs> and I stepped back from the mic, I gave him a couple minutes, I stepped up again, and the booing was louder now than it was before. So I didn't know what to do. If you've never been booed by 50,000 people, it's a slightly unnerving situation. Do I just go on and no one can hear what I'm saying, or do I give up and sit down and let the next person take over? When at that time, out of the dugout, on the dead run, comes Earl Weaver. He runs right up to me, puts his arm around me. He says in the microphone, don't boo this man. And the booing stopped. It was like the Red Sea parted. <laughs> and I got to make my little presentation to Brooks. Finally, I'd like to say that for those of us who have worked in the game, uh, 
was really, we were very, very, very fortunate. It's such a wonderful game. As Bart Giamatti recently said, or some time ago said, it's a great and glorious game. It's true that we've had some problems lately, but nothing in this life that is worthwhile is problem-free. So I think it's our responsibility for all of us who have worked in baseball, whether as players or owners or executives or scouts or umpires or whatever, it's our responsibility to make sure that this game goes on as America's favorite pastime. Finally, I would say, I'd like to say once more, thanks again for this great honor. It's a culmination of many wonderful years I had in baseball. Thank you very much.